Hello and a very warm welcome to this special show. Amazon India brings together micro, small and medium-sized businesses all under one roof. Amazon Sambhav, unlocking infinite possibilities. As the name suggests, the idea is to explore the kind of possibilities that await these businesses as they embrace digital technology and transformation. Through this initiative, in partnership with Niti Aayog and powered by the Times Network, we will bring you some amazing unheard stories and also create a platform with which to discuss how this sector is instrumental to achieving our dream of being a $5 trillion economy. Let's take a look at this AV first. The COVID-19 outbreak has changed how all of us view the world. The world's largest democracy is still putting up a tough fight. Small and medium businesses form the backbone of India's economy. After lockdown, when retail stores and outlets went on complete shutdown, small and medium businesses faced its toughest challenge. The revival was slow and all was dependent on the determination and commitment. In these times, small businesses have shown the resilience to withstand adversaries, adapted to the new normal, ensured that supply is continuous. And amidst all this, a supporting hand ensured that revival is fruitful as well as sustainable. Amazon India has been standing together with our resilient heroes through these testing times and ensuring that their businesses had the technological support as well as reach to customers across India. Efforts were put in to create an initiative that will propel up the fading hope and put forward the entrepreneurial spirit of the nation. Amazon Sambhav India in partnership with Niti Aayog and powered by Times Network takes the opportunity to showcase vibrant stories of lakhs of small and medium businesses, masterclasses with business owners, interviews and discussions with thought leaders of India. The adversity gave an important lesson of working together to explore infinite possibilities. The stories speak of resilience and the desire to move ahead. Stories from length and breadth of the country, talking of the vast cultural strove as well as the entrepreneur spirit. Be ready to witness the digital drive with the brand that stands high on values as Amazon Sambhav is poised to keep their promise to the nation by unlocking infinite possibilities. It gives me great pleasure to welcome on board uh, Mr. Amitabh Khan, the CEO of Niti Aayog. As uh, we've been discussing, uh, Niti Aayog, Amazon, the Times Network, all really coming together here uh, to pave the path forward and uh, discuss ways uh, that SMBs can be part of the critical revival of the economy. Mr. Khan, India is getting ready to be self-reliant in a lot of ways and critical to this will be the participation of these small and medium businesses at the grassroots level. What uh, role do you feel that they can play, particularly at the grassroots level, in order to really shift things going forward? In my view, uh, the micro, small and medium enterprises uh, will play a very, very significant role in reviving India's economic growth and uh, achieving the vision of an Atmanirbhar Bharat. Uh, if you look at the present scenario, there's a huge need for Indian MSMEs to enhance their capabilities to supply quality products 
at a competitive price, not merely for the domestic market, but for penetrating global markets. And embracing uh, technological solutions across the entire supply chain is absolutely imperative in addressing quality concerns and improving cost competitiveness. And this can only be made possible by a very, very strong focus on innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, MSMEs also need to be very, very adaptable with changing market conditions. When we look at MSME units in Japan, we learn that the levels of innovation undertaken by the Japanese firms actually ensured their survival despite the demise of very, very big brands. And even though China is considered the hub of manufacturing mobile phones in the world, some of the most critical components such as electronic chip, etc. are still manufactured. They continue to be manufactured in Japan. And approximately 35% of the value addition, actually many people do not know, but for an iPhone actually happens in Japan. And uh, therefore, for every iPhone that is consumed in the world, Japan earns more per phone than of China and this is all due to the innovation and product improvements taken forward by the SMME, uh, all the micro, small and medium enterprises units in Japan. And therefore, you know, my view is that strengthening our MSMEs will put India on the path towards becoming a net exporter of goods uh, by serving global markets through quality and cost competitive products. M MSMEs will have the potential to drive a very export led growth in India. Absolutely. I mean, MSMEs have formed the backbone of India's economy and uh, contributed about a third of the country's GDP as well as, uh, you know, they currently continue to do. It's been one of the worst hits, though, uh, Mr. Kant, in recent times during the pandemic. How do you see the sector recovering uh, from this, from the brutal uh, impact that we have seen of the pandemic and pulling the country out of the slowdown? No, that's a very critical question that you've asked because MSMEs indeed form the backbone of the economy. Uh, they actually employ about 111 million uh, or about 11.1 .1 crore and uh, almost about 40% of our workforce. They contribute about 30% to our GDP and about 37% of manufacturing output. Uh, close to 50% of our exports come from MSME related products and hence the importance of India's MSMEs uh, actually just cannot be understated. And uh, the outbreak, uh, you know, this uh, pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic actually led uh, to the global economy contracting much worse than the global financial crisis and it's probably witnessed the worst economic decline since the Great Depression in the 30s. And the impact has been felt in India as well. Uh, you know, we intend to get the economy back on its feet through the Atmanirbha Bharat Abhiyan. The government of India announced a very, very comprehensive package of 20 lakh crore. And as part of this stimulus package, the MSME sector has not only been given very substantial allocation, but has also been accorded priority. And announcements made under the stimulus package included about 20,000 crores of subordinate debt for stressed MSMEs, 50,000 crore equity in, in fusion for MSMEs through funds of funds, and I think most importantly, a 3 lakh crore emergency credit line loan for MSMEs, and no global tenders for government procurement of up to rupees 200 crores, which will be kept for MSMEs, and I think. Uh, uh, the most critical and the most uh, important uh, reform that was carried out was the upward revision of MSME definition. And revising the definition of MSME uh, brings in, uh, you know, many more MSME enterprises under the purview of being classified as MSMEs so that they can reap benefits associated with it and ensure rapid growth. And under the new definition, the investment limit for micro, small and medium enterprises have been raised very substantially and the distinction, uh, you know, this unnecessary distinction between manufacturing and services has been abolished. And uh, these are all game changing reforms and they will facilitate MSMEs to find credit support from banks and financial institutions. The government will act as a 100% guarantor on both the principal and the interest. And, uh, you know, these 
These measures will help our MSMEs recover from the setback and will bring, bring the country out of the slowdown and drive India's growth story. Uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, when the crisis started, not even a single PPE kit was manufactured in India. Uh, very few N95 masks were available. We were not making ventilators. Many of our MSMEs have played a very critical and significant role. We are not merely manufacturing uh, 5 lakh PPE coveralls per day in May 2020. But now today, actually, if you look at it, we have become a major exporter. And this is just one example of how Indian MSMEs adopted to perform during the pandemic. They, many of them are actually exporting uh, ventilators. Many of them are done such great innovative work. So all uh, credit to them. Mr. Kant, Atma Nirbharta and digital transformation seem to be the mantras for the way ahead. You've talked a little bit about the Atma Nirbhar, uh, uh, you know, part of it. But what about digital transformation? What do you feel will be the key enablers uh, in order for us to really realize these goals? You know, my view is that Atma Nirbharta is the only path to rebuild India and, uh, you know, make in India for India. But as the Prime Minister said, it's make in India for the world. And several reforms have been carried out, one of which is putting 20, 29 central labor laws have been rationalized into four. Uh, the state governments have reformed, uh, made some very, very major uh, reforms on both uh, uh, labor as well as uh, plug and play model for many sectors. And uh, as you are aware, we've jumped up 79 positions in the world bankies of doing business. We've come up with production linked incentive schemes. Uh, we are now providing quality infrastructure, but the key to my mind has been the huge digital transformation uh, that will drive India's manufacturing uh, forward. The world is witnessing the unfolding of the fourth industrial revolution and it will really change the way we live, work and interact with each other and business around the world will are all going digital for the sake of survival. Actually, the top companies of the world are all now becoming highly tech and digital driven and therefore to remain competitive uh, all MSMEs must go totally digital and digital technology is a absolutely a must and for digital transformation robust digital infrastructure and a robust IT mechanism uh, to prevent frauds and cyber attacks are also key enablers. Uh, this will really act as a catalyst for India's development story going forward. Because we now build the base, everybody has a biometric, everybody has a mobile, our data costs are the lowest in the world, we all do digital payments and uh, we build the platforms on the top of which a private sector can really ride and in the next bit, I think digital transformation and industry 4.0 will really be the key to MSMEs making a technological leapfrogging. How can India take advantage of the current global uh, economic scenario where large companies and countries are realizing the need for uh, multilateral supply chains and the reliance on any one uh, country as such or one region uh, or is, is becoming, uh, the, the lack of relying on any just one country or region is becoming very crucial. Yeah, so you know, since the outbreak of COVID-19 disruptions in global supply chains uh, have uh, has made companies look at alternatives to China. Uh, the government of Japan actually went to the extent of creating a special economic package for companies to shift their operations out of China and uh, they earmarked 2.2 billion US dollar package for this purpose. A passion for quality and excellence, achieving cost competitiveness through size and scale to penetrate global markets are really the key uh, mantras that we need to follow for India to emerge as a major manufacturing hub for global supply chains. Uh, recently, uh, you know, uh, we've done several reforms, as I said, the labor reforms, we've reduced our corporate tax rate, uh, we've uh, pushed for production linked incentives on several sectors, and uh, these are really the key to becoming a major driver of. Uh, several commodities and become a global integral part of the global supply chain. My personal view is that it's critical that we become globally competitive. Uh, we produce to quality and excellence and become a very major, uh, com a very major integral part of the global supply chains. And this is bound to happen in the days to come.
So do you think that the Atmanirbhar campaign will also help uh, India realize its uh, uh, true potential when it comes to uh, global markets as well and Indian manufacturing in particular in overseas markets? So, you know, the Atmanirbhar Bharat package actually focuses on preparing the country for uh, not merely uh, the domestic market by encouraging domestic manufacturing, by reducing import dependence, by increasing exports, but it focuses on preparing the country for tough competition in global supply chains and global markets. It enhances ease of doing business, it empowers MSMEs, it attracts investment including FDI and strengthens the policy for Make in India for the world. And one of the key objectives of Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign is enabling India's manufacturing sector to thrive at the global stage and become a very integral player in the global supply chain. India has several advantages like cheap labor cost, having one of the highest workforce population, a conducive uh, business environment and uh, you know we've now carried out some very very major reforms and therefore companies like Apple have already set up its manufacturing unit in India iPhone uh, you know if you look at iPhone assemblers Vistron, Foxtron, Pegatron they're all manufacturing here and South and Korean firms like POSCO and Hyundai Steel are looking to set up operation in India and we expect many many more MNCs to uh, set up uh, shop in India in the days to come. How do you see the Amazon Sambhav campaign adding value at this time? Is there a message perhaps that you'd like to give to some of the SMEs uh, out there that who are participating in this campaign and as they gear up for festive season at a time like this, there will be many viewers that will actually be watching the campaign unfold over the next few weeks. You know, I would first like to congratulate Amazon for uh, this, this unique effort that has gone behind ensuring that the people of India continue to get their goods and supplies amidst uh, the lockdowns and restrictions on movement. Uh, I can imagine it must have been a very challenging time uh, for them, like it was for all of us and everyone. And they've played a very important role in ensuring that the impact of this disruption was minimized to a great extent. I've always believed in the huge potential of e-commerce and strongly believe that uh, e-commerce uh, actually is revolutionizing retail uh, across the world but in India uh, we are at the beginning of this curve and it will be a major driving force behind the country's growth in the coming years. And e-commerce is enabling our MSMEs to become domestically as well as globally competitive. And this invariably provides a great opportunity for MSMEs to grow, uh, you know, digitally sell their products and uh, you know not waste too much of resources on retail and distribution network and uh, my view is that our economic recovery will ride on the back of growth of India's MSME industry. Uh, it is therefore uh, you know in my uh, belief uh, very important for us to promote MSMEs and give them all the support they need to get back on their feet as the government has done. The resilience that Indian MSMEs have shown towards uh, you know, despite all the odds, it's a matter of great pride for us. And it is important that all of us share the same sense of pride for our MSMEs and help them grow their business. Uh, you know, this uh, Amazon SM Bhav uh, campaign uh, is probably coming at the perfect time. Our MSMEs need the maximum visibility and support from the people of India. And this campaign is a great way for all of us to develop a sense of shared pride in our MSMEs and buy their products as the festive season uh, you know, will provide great business opportunities. And the positive impact uh, of this will last way beyond the festive season and actually will have a long term impact on helping with the revival of the MSME sector. Uh, so you know it's great effort by all of you, the Amazon, the Times Network to bring our MSMEs into mainstream media. They will be a source of inspiration for millions of other MSMEs and for the people watching them. And I'd like to emphasize that all the MSMEs watching this show, that the force of India is all behind you. Uh, we would like our MSMEs to continue to stay focused and to take our Prime Minister's campaign of Make in India for the world. Uh, they should be the key driver of this campaign. I wish everyone involved in this campaign good luck and I'm extremely positive 
that this combined effort will create a huge success story for our medium, small and micro enterprises. Mr. Khan, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure and great speaking with you in detail about the Atma Nirbhar program as well as Amazon Sambhav and all that we can uh, expect to see, uh, you know, in terms of the contribution of uh, India's MSMEs in its growth trajectory and recovery. Thank you so much for joining us. Time to slip into a very quick break, but when we come back, We'll talk about the growth of the SME sector here in India and how Amazon is helping to shape the future of small entrepreneurs in the country. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on this discussion as we uh, really explore the SME sector here in India, the kind of opportunities, the impact of COVID and the road ahead. We have three very special guests joining us for this discussion today. Let me introduce them. We've got Manish Tiwari, the Vice President, India Consumer Business at Amazon on their initiative, Amazon Sambhav India unlocking infinite possibilities, particularly want to delve into that with Manish in just a moment. Vinod Kumar, President of ISMI and Mr. Dilip Chinoy, Secretary General at FIKI. So a great uh, panel with deep insight on the SME space and how things are evolving in that particular ecosystem, one that's critical to India's growth story. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. And Manish, if I could start off with you, because you've taken this head on uh, with your initiative on unlocking the infinite possibilities here in this uh, particular segment. And we've seen that. We've seen the kind of uh, volume of growth, the number of SMEs that have benefited and, uh, and how things have even evolved during such a difficult time as we've seen in the last few months. Share with us a little bit more about this initiative. If I just go a little back, in January 2020, when Jeff Bezos, our founder and CEO, when he was here in India, he pledged an investment of an additional $1 billion to digitize 10 million micro, small, and medium enterprises, drive exports from India to $10 billion, and create 1 million additional jobs in India. All of these goals were focused on achieving by 2025. These commitments are more important now than ever before. And as a company, we are working towards achieving our goals with a focused implementation of the mechanisms that are agile and responsive to situations and local needs. As you are aware, we work with hundreds of thousands of MSMEs in India through various Amazon programs, like the Amazon.in Marketplace, Amazon Web Services, Prime Video, Kindle Direct Publishing, as well as dedicated programs to enable them to succeed and work with Amazon. We believe very, very strongly that MSMEs are the backbone of the country's economy. There are tens of millions of MSMEs in this country, and by equipping them with the right technology, tools, and opportunities, these businesses can help drive the country forward. And through this campaign, we at Amazon intend to showcase how MSMEs can discover immense possibilities for growth with Amazon. Manish, uh, you know, give us a little bit of context as well on the kind of impact that was felt uh, on small and medium businesses during COVID and the kind of opportunity perhaps that opened up uh, thanks to online uh, platforms uh, like yourself. Yeah, I think as all of us know, uh, COVID-19 has changed the way we live and work and has created daunting challenges for the small businesses around the world. Mm. And India is no exception. Many small businesses had to pivot their operations to meet these new challenges, which was presented by the pandemic, which has also given rise to incredible and inspiring moments where our selling partners in India, our delivery partners, and other MSMEs in our ecosystem have gone beyond to serve our customers during this time. The MSME sector has possibly been the worst hit by the pandemic, and its revival will be critical for the growth of the economy in India. And as the sector is one of the biggest job creators and contributes roughly one third to the country's GDP, I really appreciate the range of measures that the government of India is taking to help MSMEs during this time. At Amazon, we've been focused on minimizing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on our sellers and to help them navigate the economic challenges 
including a range of um, measures which we've taken, like fee waivers, uh, relaxation on performance metrics, on-demand disbursement, rewards program for our sellers, and of course, COVID-19 health insurance for all our selling partners. What I have found most humbling over this period is the undeterred entrepreneurial spirit and the resolve of India's micro entrepreneurs and small businesses to rebound from this economic hardship caused by the pandemic. At Amazon, I have been fortunate to come across many such encouraging examples. Let me just share something with you. We have a program called Local Shops, where we onboard local shops and get them to transact business online. It's called Local Shops at Amazon. I recently heard about a small offline business. Uh, this is a shop called Sadhana Water Solutions. It's based in Bangalore, where we are headquartered. This store retails water purifiers, inverters, and batteries. Realizing that the extended remote work was leading to a rise in demand for inverters, UPSs, and customers increasingly were preferring to buy them online, this savvy shop owner started selling on Amazon. He joined the program Local Shops at Amazon and started selling on the Amazon Marketplace in June. Now, within the first 30 days, he has seen the online channel help record close to 95,000 rupees in sales. Yeah, and this is a very, very significant part of his sales post the lockdown. And there are various such examples of entrepreneurs and small businesses coming online to interact with the consumers. Fantastic. Mr. Chinoy, let me bring you in here and get a sense of uh, how you feel the adoption has been towards the digital economy and whether you see this now as a sustainable trend going forward as well. If you look at uh, the whole ecosystem and what Manish talked about, the Amazon experience, uh, this has been replicated uh, across different, uh, uh, you know, other uh, events, uh, other platforms also. In addition, you know, the government itself through the GEM platform is also enabling this uh, to go forward. But if you look at the other aspect of uh, enablement, it is the fintech or the you know, online digital payment, which is also actually getting accelerated because people, uh, even who, those who are going to the shops, don't want to actually, uh, you know, have a cash transaction because there's a belief that, you know, that could uh, carry COVID or whatever it is. So digital onboarding, the whole video KYC, uh, the whole aspect of the, you know, uh, our, our online payment system, whether it is the uh, UPI, you know, the UPI transactions themselves have gone up uh, phenomenally over over about 80% in, 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 uh, in the existing time. So in addition to what is happening, on the retail sector, but another sector which is also allied, although they are also getting into it, is if you look at the e-pharmacy sector, which is what the pharmacies did, again, collaborating with the local pharmacies, they were actually covering uh, nearly 95% of the PIN codes in India, uh, which act, which was not possible. They've also tied up with the uh, Jan Anusadhan Kendra, which is the, the low-cost medical uh, shops of the government to deliver their medicines to needy people, uh, you know, across the country. So, uh, because contactless uh, delivery, contactless payment, uh, you know, and also being able to uh, navigate and search products online, uh, independent of the platform, there are many, many uh, platforms, is a very important aspect of the current uh, uh, portfolio of MSMEs. Also, there was a, there was a week in August where we focused on handlooms, where, where the Ministry of Textiles uh, came out with the vocal for local and for handicrafts and local, uh, you know, uh, handlooms and textiles, a lot of them also got uh, online. And these artisans who did not have access to a market, market and customers were digitally enabled uh, going forward. Mr. Kumar, let's also talk about some of the challenges, uh, you know, and when we're looking at this digital transformation, there must be some hurdles as well that uh, some of these companies are facing and trying to overcome. Share some of that with us. In fact, um, if we look at um, MSMEs, the, the uh, basic term itself primarily means that most of these guys, most of these entrepreneurs primarily work in silos. And when we are talking about silos, we say that, you know, all of them or most of them primarily do not have access to a lot of the facilities that most of us uh, wife for and, you know, use to primarily become successful. 
while COVID has been a curse for a majority of MSMEs, I can also tell you that COVID primarily has been a blessing for a few. In the last six months, we have enabled 11,000 odd MSMEs. Now, these are MSMEs and this is with the support of the Ministry of MSME, Government of India and the Ministry of Commerce. We've got 11,000 odd people to get into PPE manufacturing, masks, sanitizers, um, pharma deliveries, oxygen supplies and so on and so forth, which is actually, you know, if you look at the backbone of, we always talk about the backbone of the economy in India, but if, even if you look at the COVID management backbone, that is where the MSMEs actually are working. So that's one, one side of the entire thing. The other side is that, you know, uh, in the past six months, we've been running various digital transformation camps. Now, why are these required? You know, majority of our MSMEs have not been online. So I always say that, you know, with every um, situation like this, there's an opportunity. And most of us uh, have been talking about the fact that COVID could be an opportunity for a lot of SMEs. And some of them have actually taken this time to look at, relook at their businesses, see how they can enable um, businesses, how they can uh, enable uh, sales, how can they enable customer feedback, how can they enable delivery mechanisms, reporting, all of that, which can all happen online. Now, my feeling is that when we emerge from this pandemic, SMEs are in India are going to be a very, very different lot. They would have learned a lot. Every e-commerce company in India is looking at how do they enable SMEs. Amazon is doing an amazing job in you know, working with SMEs at the ground level, looking at what they need, how they can enable them. And my feeling is that, um, uh, you know, that for MSMEs, you know, when we said they are resilient, absolutely they are resilient. You know, we, we have situations where you close down businesses three times, but you again restart and set up something else. Stay tuned as we continue this invigorating conversation on the other side of the break. Manisha, you know, give us a sense of really how the massive stimulus that was declared has helped to fill that gap and really where we are when it comes to the kind of revival plan that the government also kick-started and is currently uh, underway. Uh, what else do you think uh, we need in order to really facilitate this? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the need to stay safe and follow social distancing norms um, has become the new normal. Hmm. Yeah. And um, if you reflect on it, e-commerce is rightly placed to service customers in the safety of their homes by following all these norms. Um, and we've seen consumers preferring to shop online during the ongoing pandemic. And hence, several businesses, including small offline stores, are now actively looking at uh, marketplaces like Amazon to help them jumpstart their businesses. So as the, uh, we were discussing, the small businesses are wanting to come online. Yeah? If you look at it and uh, if you compare versus February, uh, we are now seeing close to a 60 to 80 percent spike in new sellers registering on Amazon.in. Yeah. We also did a survey with several businesses to understand what they need to overcome the impact of COVID on their businesses. And 75 percent of the respondents shared that they would opt for an e-commerce service like Amazon to take their business forward. And in order to do this, I think the adoption of technology will be critical for businesses to position themselves for success in the future. And e-commerce can be a great enabler for businesses to reach their customers across the country and even globally. As you are aware, Amazon has a program called Global Selling. And uh, there are sellers in India who can register to sell in any of the Amazon locales globally. And that can be a big boost in terms of exports from the country, especially during times of pandemic. You know, e-commerce offers businesses an ability to uh, completely do away with geographical restrictions. You could be manufacturing in any part of the country. And as you're aware, Amazon.in services 99% plus pin codes in the country. So in that sense, it offers a level playing field for businesses of all sizes and scale and allows even the smallest of business owners to focus on their core competency 
while Amazon.in takes care of making sure that their products reach the customers in a safe and reliable way. Mr. Shinoy, in terms of an economic revival plan, you know, policy reform, is there more that, uh, that you're looking for? Do you feel that some of the right steps were taken and we're already starting to see the impact of that in uh, helping some of these businesses through a difficult time? If you look at uh, the whole, you know, the Atma Nirbhar package, which the center announced, and I'm, I'm referring this in context with NSMEs, mm -hmm. right? And of course, there was this emergency, uh, you know, uh, credit uh, yes. guarantee scheme, which actually was put in place. Uh, the tenders up to 200 crores were reserved for local people. The definition of MSMEs have actually been changed uh, when, when, we, when we look at it. And of course, uh, uh, the biggest thing from their perspective was that uh, the MSME dues, the government and public uh, uh, sector undertakings uh, were cleared. Also, uh, very recently, uh, all uh, uh, companies over 500 crores have been asked to register on the TREDS uh, platform. Uh, so that the payment to MSMEs happen uh, very fast. But the state governments also chipped in. You know, different, different state governments actually came out with multiple things. You know, some came up with the entrance sub, uh, subvention. Uh, others uh, they waived the uh, electricity charges. Others uh, did a rental waiver. Uh, you know, some in the SEZs, the, there was another uh, kind of a uh, rental waiver. Uh, of course, there was this whole uh, thing for those employing up to 100 people with wages less than uh, 15,000 uh, rupees, uh, getting the government to come in for a provident fund uh, uh, kind of uh, support system there. And the whole assistance to NDFCs, because NDFCs also primarily lend to uh, this uh, segment, it is very important uh, that you know they get through. So the, the, the center has done something, the states have done something. But most of this is supply side, right? Uh, and I think here the biggest uh, challenge is that a lot of the money mm -hmm. that has been done as we, uh, you know, transfer to uh, whether it is the Jandhan accounts or the women or, 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 or the farmers or any, any section of society is actually ending up in the bank. It is not, there's no consumption uh, actually happening. So we need a kind of a demand side uh, kind of action to increase consumption. Manish, you know, coming back to you on that as well, um, you know, given that you've been interacting with so many of these businesses and, and while you've been instrumental in making sure that they can kind of accelerate uh, at this time and, and find, a, find a path uh, forward, uh, there must be certain pain points that they have been going through. What have you observed and, uh, you know, how does this really stack up as we're also now heading into festive season? Yeah, uh, let, me, let me break it up into two parts. Um, one is some of the pain points, and I think all the panelists referred to that. Uh, MSMEs are going through very difficult times uh, since the, the pandemic sort of hit the country. And uh, in our own ways, mm -hmm. we've been trying to help them. And I spoke about the various measures. Uh, in fact, we, had, uh, we celebrated the Amazon Small Business Day. We celebrated Stand for Handmade. Uh, the panelists, uh, various people spoke about uh, the need to bring up uh, the artisans, the weavers in this country. And we had a complete uh, program which was Stand for Handmade, where we actually waived off fees for everyone in that program. So in our own way, we are trying to bring them back, uh, get them on their feet as quickly as possible. Um, you also touched upon the festive season. And um, this festive season for us at Amazon, our main focus will be on enabling sellers, especially the smaller sellers, to um, actually get their goods listed and to get some acceleration in their sales. And this, we believe, will help them get back on their feet quickly. Uh, some of the programs include uh, lacks of sellers and MSMEs, including artisans, women entrepreneurs, and a large number of emerging Indian brands. So let me just talk a little bit about some of the programs we run. So we have an Amazon Karigar program, which focuses on artisans and handicrafts. And in some ways, is linked to 800,000 small artisans and Karigars all over the country. Similarly, there's a program called Amazon Saheli, and that focuses on women entrepreneurs, small women entrepreneurs, and is again linked to close to 200,000 women entrepreneurs all over the country. And then there is a program called Amazon Launchpad, which is focused on emerging Indian brands, it helps small brands actually accelerate quickly in the country. And of course, we have this new program, which is local shops on Amazon, where we are getting offline stores uh, to sell online. 
So these are some of our critical programs which we will dial up and uh, we are committed to make these programs and the smaller sellers succeed during the festival season. At the same time, what is important is for these programs to make sure that they help customers find everything they need from the latest mobile phones to groceries to handicrafts to gifts and we will ensure that we get them delivered safely and reliably to the homes of our customers. Absolutely, I think we're all looking forward to it. Uh, Mr. Kumar, uh, you know, as we take advantage of uh, the opportunity that uh, this digital transformation presents, are there new segments of the economy that you also see thriving, whether it be smaller towns, whether it be uh, certain, um, certain pockets or, uh, you know, kinds of industries? Uh, you know, what are some of the trends that, uh, that you see evolving? Uh, you know, um, thanks to Manish, uh, the fact that, you know, they are, they are running programs which are uh, for women, for um, uh, people uh, in handicrafts and across the entire gamut. There's a lot of, um, uh, I would say, information about selling online, but most people don't know how to do it and how to go about it. But nevertheless, the other program that I'd, I'd like to talk about here is, um, you know, India, we talk about more than eight um, crore MSMEs. You know, the official figures 2014 is somewhere around six crores, but I feel, you know, the numbers have grown. And obviously with the pandemic now, obviously there will be a change in numbers. But out of this, if you fa factually look at, $312 billion is what India exports. Now we do, do a lot of exports on diamonds, jewelry, you know, a lot of other things. Now if you look at primarily MSME exports from this, we're talking about somewhere around 40%. And let me share with you that these MSME exports or exports specifically of micro, small, and medium enterprise products do not constitute more than 12% factually of the entire exports. Now, what we are trying to work on and emphasize on that we, along with the government, need to work on a plan where, where these exports can be focused on and more importantly labor intensive exports as an economy we need to create jobs we won't be only dependent on the local market you have the entire world as your oyster and that's what is our message to every msme out there stop looking at only your local market go and look at the product that you have make it the best product in terms of quality in terms of delivery and all of all of that and Look at the world as your market, not just India. The world is your oyster. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your enthusiastic participation in today's show on what is a very important topic and something that all stakeholders in the ecosystem are working very hard towards. We look forward to this festive season and also do stay tuned as we bring you a whole host of power pack programming here on the Times Network, which will give you an idea of what's in store, including the making of AGIF and Meet the Real SME Heroes of India as part of our special initiative, Amazon Sump of India, the unlocking of infinite opportunities. Manish, Mr. Chinoy, Mr. Kumar, thank you so much for joining us. That's where we leave it on today's edition. Thanks for watching.